With his strings and bow, he can evoke feelings of peace and harmony. And just as easily convey a message of celebration. Arvel Bird's musical talents on display here at a 2005 performance in Connecticut are a rare gift and absolutely central to the person he's become. I'm Métis, or mixed blood of Paiute and Scottish ancestry. I'm Paiute on my mother's side and Scottish on my father's side. But raised off reservation in predominantly white Mormon Utah, Bird's Paiute heritage was very much suppressed. I always knew I was Paiute, but because my mother grew up in a time of prejudice and inequality, she didn't acknowledge her ancestry. In turn, her son grew up not understanding his ancestry, not understanding who he was, a boy with very low self-esteem. Fortunately, young Arvel discovered music, and specifically the violin. And I began to uh, dive into the violin uh, headlong. I mean, I lost myself in it. It was my escape from my uh, existence of, of being so timid, so shy, so introverted, so afraid of everything. The violin was my refuge. It was the beginning of Arvel Bird's violin odyssey. 11 years of classical training, exploration, and expansion into other musical genres, bluegrass and folk, country and western, gigs in Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, world tours with names like Glenn Campbell, Tom T. Hall, Ray Price, and Loretta Lynn. I did that for almost 12 years, and it seemed like I was playing everybody else's music but my own. And I was, I had the call with, from within, you know, that it was time for me to play my own music, to let my music come out into the world. So that's when I began to uh, record my own music and uh, become a soloist in my own right. Liberated through his music, the mixed blood bird began a journey of self-discovery learning about his ancestors, the Paiutes, their language, their customs, their traditions, and then incorporating it all into his language, his music. My name is Arvel Bird. I like to do music about animals and birds and talk about their totem powers. I like to talk about the history and the tradition of Native American fiddling and Native American spirituality. Bird had always loved animals, but he says he came to realize that not only is there a physical connection between yeah. animals and humans, but also yeah. a spiritual bond. According to the medicine or the teachings of some Native Americans, an animal totem is the physical manifestation of a spirit guide or helper. It's like a guardian angel that comes to us in this life walk in the form of a bird or an animal, and they come to teach us, they come to help us. They have a lesson for us to learn. And this next song is about the red tail hawk, the spirit messenger. Bird recorded two CDs of animal totems and mixes them liberally into his concerts, whether it's the red-tailed hawk, the turtle, the bear, or in this performance with his band One Nation, the coyote. As the medicine of the coyote is about the power of discernment, which is one of the most important lessons you'll learn in life. Through his music, Bird also discovered another Paiute and Native American tradition, a way of passing along important information, life lessons, from one generation to the next. He discovered the art of storytelling. Because I was playing instrumental music, I didn't have lyrics to explain the song that I was performing. So the story was developed to help the audience understand that this was a song about the horse or the bear or the badger. I began to see the power and the magic of the story the power that it has to change a life. And these stories were about the uh, animals and birds and their spirit totem powers. If you want abundance in your life, maybe you should honor the buffalo. So I say, let's get on the back of our ponies and let's ride down into that herd of buffalo. Let's run with the buffalo. And if you listen closely, you can hear the arrow as it leaves the bow and connects with the source of that abundance. Tatanka. Like the arrow he talks about launching into the buffalo herd, Arvel used his fiddle and bow 
to launch himself, to free himself from the things that had been holding him back in life, connecting him with his own source of abundance, his heritage and his music. All downbeats. Okay. Da, 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 da. These days, when he's not touring, Bird might be found jamming, as he was with some local musicians in Guthrie a few months ago. Or he might be supporting efforts to protect wildlife, as he was when he visited the Iowa tribe's eagle aviary in Perkins recently. To most Native Americans, the eagle is a sacred bird, and its feathers are sacred because on its wings and feathers, our prayers are carried to the Creator. Through his music, Bird says, he now honors both his Paiute and Scottish heritage. Moreover, he says he's brought harmony to his life by putting himself on what Native Americans call the Red Road. Now when a person begins to walk the Red Road, the Red Road teaches us that we are all related, but not all we only related to each other, we are related to every living thing. And we are so interconnected to every living thing on this planet that what we do over here affects what happens over here. It's a matter of uh, following one's heart and being true to oneself, trusting in the fact that we have all the knowledge and wisdom inside of us to have everything that we want to have in our lives, that we want to do or want to uh, be. It's all right here inside. Alex Cameron. He's not.